Welcome to the D Gentleman Show. I'm Brett Ernst, along with Alex Money Monaco. We also got the director of Race and Sportsbook of MGM Grand, Lamar Mitchell, and one of my dear friends, comedian extraordinaire, Mr. Paul Verzi. And it's Super Bowl week, people. Yes, it is. Yeah, we're Let's go. Up. We're at the Sportsbook at Mandalay Bay, and we're ready to go. But first, we got to talk basketball. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Super Bowl week? We're talking basketball? We have to talk basketball. Let's go. Well, it's trending on Bleacher Report right now, um, and I'm sure you people know already, but um, Anthony Davis is demanding to be traded. Now, uh, now, by the way, his stats are, I mean, he's literally probably, would you say, the best player right now because LeBron's out? Uh, I think I think Giannis in uh, Mil Milwaukee is probably, I think, just above him. I agree with you there. I will say that Davis is having an MVP year. The last time somebody had an MVP year like this and was traded was Jabbar. In 74 to well that's wow. what I was it was 72 73 wasn't it uh, 74 was his last year with Milwaukee 75 with the Lakers he was having a great year well that was gonna be my question and um, I don't remember anybody really um, being traded at the peak of their career and in, in, you know where they're at uh, well I was gonna say Vince Carter was one that came to mind maybe Shaq of course but um, because it's very rare, but it's unprecedented. Do, do you think, I was going to ask you, who else Who else could you think of that was being traded? I don't think you could say Vince as Carter. As good as at he that, is right now. I don't think you could put Vince Carter at that level. But he was you know, in his prime. He was, prime, he was in his prime. He was good. Shaq, too. But I think Anthony Davis right now, I mean, I guess Kareem would be the other numbers as far as dominance in the league and being traded at that point of their career. How the Lakers keep getting the most dominant center in the league every generation? They have not missed a generation now. If they land AD. Yeah. Do you hear a theme? L.A. 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 Everyone wants to play in L.A. That's a good call. I mean, what, what NBA franchise has had that many dominant centers? No. I mean, literally, they're like the Dallas Cowboys for quarterbacks. I'll tell you something right now. If the Knicks <laughs> do this, if the Knicks do this, because there's talks, oh, everybody wants them in New York. You know, this is, you know what the Knicks are? The Knicks are like your alcoholic uncle that you don't invite to the holidays. <laughs> but then all of a sudden you hear he's starting to get it together. <laughs> so you're like, maybe we'll give him a chance. And then they come back and they do this. We have Porzingis, okay? He's going to get healthy. Yeah. We have maybe Zion Williamson or R.J. Barrett. Those guys will lure in a big free agent and you build that way. This is typical Knicks to get the one big guy, okay, and get rid of everything else. All those other pieces like the Isaiah Thomas days, don't do it, New York. It's just so don't, Knicks don't you to bring dice. up the Knicks First of all, the Lakers it's segment. not like he's it. going to the Knicks. But you just, no, but they, listen, you're just listen, projected listen. this whole argument listen, you listen, let's, no, let's be honest. I live in the, the, I live the, Knicks in, right I live in the biggest, Knicks. best city in the world. Let's be honest, okay? okay. L.A., smell A. Okay, New York, the Big Apple. That's the what everybody sun. cares about. I want the sun. I don't want the blizzard. I want the blizzard of New York. I want the sun. That's what all these guys are thinking. Plus, Bron. That's what I was going to say. LeBron, LeBron is that is that factor in this new trend. Look, first of all, I don't think Anthony Davis is going to go the next. <laughs> well, I read the New York Post and I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like fake right. news. Uh, okay, <laughs> I got excited. I got nervous. It was all uh, over. It was on the yeah. it was in the Inquirer. I got all nervous. <laughs> A star. I really think that uh, he's going to make a play for L.A. And, and there was also rumors to that Kyrie Irving wanted to go play with LeBron again. Yeah. yeah Which that would be odd, wouldn't it? Apparently they had a head-to-head -head or a big talk, and Kyrie said, I understand what you went through when I was there. I'm going through the same things in Boston. Young guys want the world at their fingertips right then and there, but don't want to put in the work. For a Celtic in his prime to go to the Lakers, has that ever happened? Ah, that's a good call. I think both know that they need each other to win. And let's be honest, LeBron James doesn't win that series. Don't forget, the game five was a game five. LeBron had 45. Guess who else had 45? Kyrie Irving had it. Guess who hit the big one in game seven? Kyrie Irving did. So those two together know maybe. And LeBron's probably going to ease up a little bit on Kyrie knowing, hey, you know what? Maybe we had our thing. But for me to get one in L.A., I need, if I'm going to get one in L.A., maybe I'll calm down and pull back a little and take the guy that I know can do it with me because I already did, which it would be Kyrie Irving. So the question is now, if L.A. gets one, okay, is it, is it LeBron or is it Kyrie? That's the guy? Sorry, guys, we're doing a show here. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, so what, wait, wait, what were you saying is, are you saying, wait, wait, so are you saying that if Kyrie Irving goes to the Lakers and they win, Right. You're saying if Kyrie Irving goes to L.A. and they win a title, right. is it LeBron or Kyrie? Right. It's LeBron. It's LeBron. Still it's LeBron? Still LeBron. Until somebody dethrones LeBron, he is the king. Other guys have great skill sets, but that's the man, LeBron. But would, would the legacy be 
LeBron needed him to win the same way that he needed him to win in Cleveland? Of course, that'd be the headline. I mean, that would be the case, though, wouldn't it? But he didn't need him in Miami. He had flash. Well, let's 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 also get something straight with uh, the Miami with the Heat, okay? Which that's my squad. I love the Heat. That's Dwayne. That was Dwayne Wade's team, right? That was Dwayne Wade's team. Dwayne Wade won without uh, won without LeBron. He right. had Shaq, but yeah. Well, I mean, they needed a center, yeah. but you also remember that the, what they traded Shaq for, Kobe took pretty much that same team and didn't even make the playoffs with him. That you right or wrong? Yeah, it was it was definitely Wade's team when they won. Well, don't forget they were oh, they were down 0-2 to the Mavs, and then Wade turned into right. turned into a superhero. Right. And yes, they did have Shaq. I think Shaq was a little older then, though. Yeah, well, I mean, it was it was more towards the end. I mean, but I, I don't know. And, and he didn't have a great series at all. And and that wasn't a knock on Kobe, by the way. Obviously, that was just letting you know what Dwayne Wade was able to win with. And, and, and at least get to the playoffs with, right? With, with that, it was, it was pretty much the same team that Kobe couldn't make the playoffs with. Yes, Shaq was a deciding factor, but, I mean, it was still Wade's team. Wade I, won I one without LeBron. LeBron did not win one without Wade. Here's Sorry. my question. We're three days from the Super Bowl. Why are we talking basketball? I, I just want to say this. Exactly. How L.A. is that, that we're talking about an NBA Lakers trade while the Rams are in the Super Bowl? We're literally Bowl. talking. <laughs> so L.A. We're so LA. LA. We're, We literally went into Miami Heat on Super Bowl week. All right. That's New York, guys. Shame. Guys, it's. Shame. Look, it's a trending topic. Can we it's talk Sacramento topic. Kings here? You know what? I, I hope talk Sacramento I hope, Kings. I hope more Cowboys. I hope the Knicks get Anthony Davis. How about that? <laughs> Look, uh, we have to talk about it. It's sports news. Let's move on. Alex I'm fine with that. Soccer, yeah. I, that's where we're going to go. Yeah, Chelsea's <laughs> down one nothing in the second half. Alex is such a degenerate. You can go on cable one. I want to talk to the people. Where's camera one? Where's camera one? Alex is such a degenerate. Okay. <laughs> we just found this out before we started shooting. This kid's got money on, on a soccer game. No, what kind of American bet soccer? I'm I, trying to gear up collateral to throw on the patch, which is my pick later I, listen, in the show. Well, I can't be giving that away already. <laughs> I've met degenerates in my day, <laughs> but I can't remember a day where somebody leaned in and whispered, dude, what do you think about UTEP today? Yeah. <laughs> like, who? I've never heard. What do you think about UTEP in what the about first quarter? Montana play? It's a great <laughs> strategy. Sorry. My five team tees are still alive. And I, now I got the Pats plus four and a half on Sunday, thanks to Montana minus two. UTEP among them. Can I just, I just want to say one thing. Go ahead, go ahead. I, do, I just want to say one thing. I really did know a degenerate gambler who had real problems, marital problems. And one of the funniest things I've ever heard a degenerate gambler say to me, we were at a golf club, and he just goes, hey, lock of the year. Lock of the year. It was mid-season, too. Lock of the year. Phoenix Suns first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> he said lock of the year. And we just ran out of the clubhouse. And I was like, that's why this guy's divorced three times. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> All right, I want to get to another topic. Let's talk NFL. Well, I want to yes. one more one more sports topic. I think it's important. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. Two nothing. Two nothing. You can't make this up. That's, uh, that's great timing. All right, LA Sparks guys. What do you think they're gonna do? <laughs> that hey, Sparks right, trade. We love the Aces. All we right, love the Vegas. <laughs> love the Vegas yeah, absolutely. Aces. All right, here we go. Let's go. Let's move on. Um, Another, can I, can I at least talk about this? It's NFL related. Sure, if it's, it's NFL super, related. It's not Super Bowl related, but it's NFL relating. Uh, ESPN is reporting that the NFL is considering a judgment challenge call that could include a penalty or time runoff if it's incorrect to help and kind of solve the problem of what we witnessed in the NFC Championship game. So in other words, a coach, they're going to propose it, okay, to the uh, rules committee or what? Who decides on that anyways? Is there like a... A room Does anybody of, know? A room full of guys that are in the league, coaches, owners. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, John. Who, who, who decides on that stuff? Like, uh, uh, if, if the, the rules committee. It's, it's, a, it's a competition committee. A the, rules committee. the rules committee, which Sean Payton is a part of. So don't think that's not his first well, order. Well, it says the NFL is going to consider. It's already, it's already got the attention of Roger Goodell. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm sorry, go ahead. What no, it's say? necessary closure for the entire city. And anybody that bet on New Orleans. But it's spin. It's yeah. spin to make sure that let people know we're going to address it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad call, but bad calls happen all the time. No, this was, this is. It see, was egregious, but yeah. still, it this was is a, a bad th call. What makes this even worse is that they find uh, uh, Coleman was 26, uh, what, almost $27,000 for a non-call? Uh -huh. Yeah. Which we know they've done before. Yeah. 
But I meant, what, what, is, that, what is that doing? What, what does that do? That's salt on the wound. That's just insult to injury, quite frankly. But there's a video going around. I don't know if it's uh, Rams propaganda where they're showing that the ball was tipped. So it may not have been pass interference, but it definitely, obviously the NFL recognized it was a helmet to helmet personal foul hit. You know, you know the, no, the so you're getting fined for no for not getting a call. The, the big thing about this game is, like I said, bad calls happen all the time. The key here is, after that field goal, the Rams still have to go down the field to tie it and play in overtime on defense to win the game. So get over it. Like I tell my 12 year old daughter, get over it. It was yesterday. Move on. Am I still crying about the catch from 82? No, I moved on. <laughs> Okay, and, but and you know what? And he did, you know, he did throw a pick. Breeze threw a pick in a big moment because the defense got to him. So you have to say that. I mean, that was a horrible call, but you know, I, I you gotta, what can you do? You know, you there's think, a bad call. You think the Saints beat themselves after that moment then? Mm. I think they were, I think after that, I mean, look, when you looked at Peyton's face, you saw him the was whole it, time was, was going it, up and down the sideline just going. Does it remind knew. you when LeBron pouted after J.R. Smith decided no, to dribble out? Not at all. Okay. No, it's two all different right. things. Yeah, that's, you yeah, know, that's I don't know. I think momentum's very real, and they hung their heads you didn't and they rolled. And, and I agree with the momentum, and that's why it's such a huge call. It absolutely 200% or non call takes the wind out of your sails. I mean, yeah, yeah. let's get to that Patriots game. I mean, th this, this phantom roughing the passer. And then Brady throws an interception, which is negated by a, a neutral zone by a neutral fraction. zone infraction. Which, and and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but and I wish Javon was here for this. No disrespect. Yeah, thank you. I know. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit smaller. You, you weren't an all-pro uh, defensive end. <laughs> well, uh, the rest play, you would have cried. <laughs> Bursey was unbelievable when he played at the. Uh... Anyways, um, the refs usually say, "Hey, you're you're in the neutral zone. Back up." Nobody said anything. They, they blew time. the whistle right after. Andy Reid was complaining about that. No heads up. Normally the refs mention it to the player coach, but nothing this time. So, you know, I mean, how many wishes the, do the Patriots have? I mean, with the genie. I mean, everything is like, let me get this, let me get this, let me get this. These phantom calls. Well, getting back to uh, just making it come full circle, the referees absolutely ruined the NFL this season. They, they demolished. I agree. I, one I of think the worst, I've, one of the worst, worst seasons, seasons I've, I've seen. How, as far as these, if I'm not mistaken, these guys are not full-time employees. No, now this year they are. Finally. Yeah. But how many years but, is it going to take? John, how much do they make a game, the refs? Refs make between four and $10,000 per game. They make somewhere between one hundred and sixty to $200,000 a year and some sort of 401K and, you know, that kind of stuff. See, that's strong money to be working yeah. 20 weeks for a, a year. Right. I mean, they need, yeah, to, they need to be held accountable. I really, I think they ruined the season. But, again, the question is, do you think that this type of rule that they're trying to enact, this judgment challenge, now, mind you, what it means with the penalty incentive, that if the coach is wrong, instead of taking a timeout away, they're either going to burn the clock or they're going to penalize you. Because you do know some coaches, because there's a penalty on every play. Right. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It yeah, does this open is a no call, though. This is a bit different. Well, th this would help correct that. So they can, it's, it's called the judgment challenge. So that's also going to like encompass it. you not calling pass interference or something as blatant as that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, a Aaron's point is, you know, could, there was a no call on a holding on the line of scrimmage between an offensive guard and a right. tackle. Is it that? Is, is, they have to be specific. Yeah, they, it yeah. has to be sp specific. Well, it can't be that, like you said. It's got to be pass interference only, I think. You can't, because holding happens every play. We yeah. Or helmet to helmet. Or well, personal foul. Right, or, right, right. Or helmet to helmet. Well, that's, I, think, I think they'd be limited on it. Like I don't they like are this with time them. thing. This time thing. And this, How about just go to the booth in New York and have them look at it and just go, we have to overrule this. Like, that's what they should they're getting. They're trying to get cute over here. Here's why they don't. It's because read the book the fix is in. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I can't. I'm be the honest. The NFL and all the major league sports are under the same bylaws as professional wrestling and roller derby. So... If the referees are paid, hear me out on this, you're laughing. If I'm laughing at roller derby, you care. Well, that's my point. It's, it's sports entertainment. So the league could easily, because the refs are on the payroll, legally tell them we kind of want to see this type of matchup make it happen. And that's what happened. And, and Have you ever watched roller derby? I, I, don't, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> okay, just, I've never I'll watched it. It's a whole other conversation. Good movie back the to Supreme Court or whoever heard this case said that they followed the same by, bylines or bylaws 
and they specified roller derby. I didn't write the court case. I didn't make the judgment. I like the call. Unlike you guys are judging me right now, and so I don't appreciate the, it. So you think the game, you think the NFL, some games are fixed? I don't think it's fixed. I think that they're like, look, we want to kind of want to see this happen if it can happen that way. Uh, how many times have you watched the game? I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you no, saying? I just the league didn't want Kansas City and New Orleans. That's I don't think two so. Two small markets, two road teams win. I, Ten and zero. You were the one who was on it. Ten and zero. Championship eight, eight, home yeah, yeah, team yeah. favorites in the I, last five years, and they go zero and two this past time. It's, it's, You're not buying it. I'm not buying it. Uh, in the industry I'm in, I'm not buying it. I mean, I've seen enough football in the last 20 years behind the counter. Uh, I'm not buying it, but you know, buying what? The calls. Some of the calls are egregious. Well, well, it, this this book also talks about there is no. There, it's Vegas and the and these NFL are they're separate. This has nothing to do with the money that's being bet. Every, that's what we were taught as Italian-Americans, right? <laughs> Vegas is in. They, they, the money is on this team. <laughs> so it was everybody's theory when they lost. Yeah. It's more about a profit-sharing entity and the billions of dollars that they make in major markets and, and the licensing and the revenue. Well, going I further, have a cousin that told no, me. I knew, no, I knew, I knew an old-timer. He goes, listen, the 69 Super Bowl with the Jets was fixed, and I could prove it, and he never did. <laughs> He just goes, I could, I could prove it, and then he just walked away. <laughs> Look, I'm not a making accusation. I'm just saying. This cousin or this cousin or this cousin told you. We've got 10 cousins tell me. Well, Brett, taking it further, didn't you say in that same rule book, five teams in the league help the other 27? Yeah, it's something like seven. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's the one with the major markets, the Giants, right. the Cowboys. And they're really trying to build that L.A. market. That L.A. market is huge. I mean, the fact that they haven't had a football team since... You know, uh, to, Nine, was it 95, 96? That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's And nuts. they couldn't keep up. That's yeah. the second largest city in America, right? Yep. New York's number one. The second largest market. media market in America. It, yeah. is the, it is the largest media market. Second largest. Second. New York is the first but, one. But here's where people get confused if something's fixed or not, okay? If, if, they, call, if they call you, say, like Donaghy said this, because this happened in the NBA. He was like, look, we know going into a game, if Rasheed Wallace opened his mouth once, you're going to call it much quicker than you would if somebody else that's did. What I, that's what I mean. So, so what they say is, listen, we're going to be a little less tight on the flags. This. So that, to me, though, that manipulates the game. It's like, it should be one, it's like an umpire who's got a strike zone, right? It's right. like, keep the strike zone the same way. Don't have somebody go, listen, if it's a little high, we're going to be calling those tonight. And then, and then the next day, not, and somebody gets eliminated. So although it might not be, hey, we want the Rams to win, it could be, look, we're going to call this a certain way today. And I, I think David Stern did that, and I think that, that uh, I think no different in any other professional sports league. What about the lottery, Patrick Ewing? Did you think he... Did that too? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know, but I'll take it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he brought you a lot of championships. Yeah. Hey, you know what? It's been, it's been better. You know what? Who do you like? Huh? Who do you like? The I Heat? I like the Heat. Okay, yeah, the Heat, the Cowboys. But well, back to the judgment call. Are you... Just for the record, really quick, because he's taking We're shots. The Knicks no, and the no. Heat. All right, yeah. all right, really quick. I grew up in the 80s. Okay? <laughs> the Heat, Ronnie Cycli, Harold Miner, they, they didn't win anything. He's a DJ. Glenn Rice. Right? Yeah, 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 Glenn Rice. Rice, don't forget. Well, Glenn Rice, Rice as well. Yeah. Okay. The Yankees didn't win anything, and the Cowboys didn't win anything in the 80s. Right. Okay, so don't, don't crap on my teams. No, I know, but you took a shot at Big Pat. You know, that's 33. That's, that's all I got. All right, panel. Yay or nay on the judgment call if you're in the committee? Absolute yay. Absolute. I say nay. I'm a yay. I'm thumbs up. What if you get one? Now, let, me, let me ask you. What if you get one of those? And you say, look, you can use this judgment call one time. Because if there's a penalty, then there's a penalty. It doesn't matter. If but there's judge, not, you, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna, you can hurt yourself. Judgment call is too broad. Who's judgment? When the judge? Who? Who am I talking to? Who's judgment? No, but judgment. I just <laughs> only like, God can judge I, me. I, I like a set <laughs> thing. It goes to a certain place and it gets overturned or not. But one question I have you for you, Lamar. If something egregious happens like that non-call, has any, has there ever been a time in Vegas history where people get their money back? If I put a hundred grand down and something crazy happened lightning strikes somebody something happens and, and and all of a sudden the ticket says i technically lose but it was because of that does that does no does, no the, the way how it works is the game has to go the full amount of time for uh payment so for example years ago unlv hosted wisconsin college football game power went out in the game you're getting plus let's say 17 with unlv minus 17 with wisconsin everybody comes back to cash your tickets it's a refund the game didn't go the allotted time it had to go. So that was your lightning strike. So in this situation, <laughs> if the game goes 55 minutes for betting purposes, it's action. Gotcha. Although Jay said a new book in Jersey gave money back to people that took, took the Saints. 
but that's because it's a new book. Did you hear that? Yeah, very, I did. To be specific, you said it was a very small book that only had about $100,000 in uh, action. Right. Uh, they yeah. trying to make a name for themselves. Okay. Yeah. But, but what is that, where does that fall with baseball? You still got to get, it's a it's base, game after five Right, it's, minutes. right, exactly. It has to go full six. Same thing with uh, rainouts and everything like that. So, uh, But totals. that's not like that in football? Like if they No, go, football, it's, it's uh, 55 minutes. 55 yeah. minutes. So no refund if the completion of the game happens? For 55, 55 minutes. minutes. If it's under 55 yeah. minutes, you get a refund. Right, exactly, uh, both sides. I learned that because I had Boise State in the bowl game, and I was <laughs> so grateful it got rained out. Boise State, Boston College. Boston College was blowing them out in the first quarter. And I got the money. By the way, this kid's a Hall of Fame degenerate. Yeah, really yeah, yeah, like, you it's remember, sad. like. I'm just wearing the part, baby. It's sad. But on a blackjack <laughs> segment, so Brett and I got to visit the High Limit Room here at the Mandalay Bay with Robert, learn how to play blackjack. Let's take a look. So we are here at the brand new high roller room at the Mandalay Bay, uh, hanging out with Robert Riley. He's the pit boss here. And even though we know how to play blackjack, well, we understand it, we really don't understand it. So Robert's gonna really explain the game to us like a real gentleman, like a guy who knows the game. Mm. So Robert, f first of all, how long have you been a pit boss? Uh, I've been in the business 31 years. I've been in a suit for probably 30 of them. Really? So I've been a supervisor of both of them. For 30, 30 years. years yeah. And you started one year as a dealer? And you just... I started as a dealer. I'm like a third or fourth generation of my family. The day I turned 21, my grandfather took me down to the El Cortez and told his friend to put me to work. And... So from an etiquette standpoint at the higher rollers table, what are the do's and don'ts? Or is there anything we should know since we do play $5 punch? <laughs> no, it's basically the same. You're, you're, the rules are the same. You're going to, you know, you're come to make some money on, you know, on gambling. Now, right now, it says dealer must draw 16, stand, stand on, on all 17s. 17. Can you explain that? Yes. If a dealer has 16 or less, he will hit his hand. He has to. He has to. Once he hits 17, at this particular table, we stand on all 17s. Different tables have different rules up here that you'll see. All right, so does this put the odds more in our favor? This is better for the, for the customer. Yes. I got you. Well, let's, let's deal a hand. No? Sure, well, yeah. Well, make, I just, I was... make some bets. Woo. See, this is bad. So he, you have to stand on that, right? I have to stand if I if have that's a, 10, a 10 or an ace underneath. Okay. Any other card, I'm going to hit it. But if I want to carry it. myself like a gentleman and a professional, I'm doing this and this as opposed I would to say yeah. You always do that because of the surveillance team. Gotcha. They have to see what's going on. So that's why we have Are surveillance. Are you staying on that? I think I, think I, I, think I should because you have a seven. Now, Smart play. So. He has to stand on 17, so the odds would be you'd have a 10 under there, right? But if it's a nine, then you gotta hit again. Now if I hit, I have a lot of chances of going over. I don't like that. 20. You only have really one chance of going over. Well, if it's a 10, a, a face card. Yeah, a face card, that's but now a there, lot of faces. There's, there's a nine, eight, seven going down, so you got more than the weight going up. Well, I was gonna you say got hit nine me. to five. I was five. gonna tell you to hit me. Hit me. All right, good job. 19. Now, stay. Stay. All right, dealer's got 15. It's 18. Unbelievable. Since you did again. the right play, you won. Hey. Sorry, but you played it correctly. You just hey, Robert, do didn't me have fair. the luck. Do me a favor. Throw that in my <laughs> uh, so kick. Mean. All right. So here's some scenarios you presented us with. So, Robert, you tell me two eighths. What do I do? I suggest because the dealer has a six up that you split that hand. What does a that split is a pair. You can split any pair. Any pair. Any pair. So is this an even item? even face cards? You can split. If they're ten through king, and then one's a ten and one's a king, you can split them. Their same but value. Is this an ideal split though? Two eights. Yes. Okay. So show us what happens. What what, what he should do to split it. So, so he split you, eight. You put your uh, three hundred dollars. You match your bet on the side. Take it like that. You've got your two hands out here. Now we're gonna only go towards the first hand. We play them separately. We don't play them together. Like, all right. Mm -hmm. So now you have a 15 against a six. You make your decision. What would be your advice for 15 showing? 15 six? against a six. I'm gonna stay. I would say okay. I would stay as well. Stay exactly. on that one. All right. Now you got a 17 against six. You're also gonna stay on that. 17. All right. Dealer has 16, and dealer bust. Yeah. You win both hands. This is, a, no, this is a different type of double down. Now, what makes this so unique? Because it's a three or a 13? What, it's, what three, makes... it's three or 13, and 
no matter what I give you, you cannot bust. Okay. Because that's a, it's a, you know, if I put you at 10, now you go to 13. So it's a soft three. This is a good double because you've got a lot of room for to make improve your hand. And the dealer's got a six up, which chances are 90% of the chances he's going to have to uh, hit that hand. Okay. The only way he's not going to hit that hand is if there's an ace underneath. So now I can either go the same or less. We'll, 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 we'll do that then. Yeah, you know, right. You're going to double down for less. And I would actually call that out as a dealer, double for less, so everybody around me knows. Well, then, how about I'm I match it? Then it's, then it's just a straight double. Straight yeah. double. And I just do your hit. Double down, you got a 12. You can't improve on that hand no more. You're not allowed to hit it or anything. Right. Dealer's got a 15. Dealer bust. Dealer bust. Nice. This man went undefeated in the second. Yeah, he hasn't lost yet. <laughs> let's play one hand, and let's see what happens. You haven't lost a hand yet. I haven't lost a hand yet, and I'm feeling lucky, and on top of that, this isn't real money. <laughs> so why not? Let's do it. Ugh. I get a two. Hey. Oh. oh. All right, you got a 12 I got, I got a hit. That's right. Very good move. Hit. 19. I'm staying. I'm staying. Oh! Oh my! 19. Oh, push. Oh. That is. Well, Almost I guess everything. I'm picking up dinner. It's awesome, like the, Brett. like the guy on vacation right now. Well, kids, this <laughs> is why you shouldn't gamble and <laughs> blow it all on one hand. Hey, Robert, I really appreciate you having us, man. You're, You're welcome. Gentleman. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you. Hey, it's Super Bowl week. All right, all right, guys. <laughs> Listen, kids, we're getting into the Super Bowl now. The next four hours is only going to be Super Bowl. <laughs> so straddle in, strap it in, let's go. There's a game um, this weekend? Say what? Really? There's yeah, a there's a game. A oh, little... by the way, I, I want to ask you guys, who'd you bet in on the Pro Bowl? I took the over. Did <laughs> <laughs> you? Hey, Jamal Adams. Come on, man. Yeah, it's the hey. jet highlight of the year. Oh. It's yeah. basically a two-hand touch game in pads. It's well, it, it should have been how many mistakes was the uh, announcing team going to make. That should have been a prop. Mm. There you go. What, you watch the game? No. Nah. <laughs> I watched, you know, I did watch the skills challenges. I thought that was good. Russell Wilson always... had a great showing, you know, yeah. for, for accuracy. Yeah. Dak and Dunk made it. Huh? Dak and Dunk made it. Uh-huh, absolutely. I did, like, I did like the one, <laughs> they did put Saquon Barkley, uh, Elliott, and Kamara all on defense on one play, in the, uh, and they did were like rushing the pass, so it was pretty did cool. Did you see, see Kamara on D end? That gave me a light bulb thought. You put a 4-3 guy in for one play, just hear me out, one play, he's resting. You listening, Belichick? Like a, ga like a gadget guy <laughs> to go against a 320 pound guy, right tackle, left not, tackle? Not Mike for Evans nothing. had a pick. Not for did, nothing, that was Have Jimmy. you been drinking, Alex? Commissary. Yeah, he did. He had a couple commissario shots. Always. That was Jimmy Johnson football, by the way. Taking DBs, making them linebackers, taking linebackers, making them defensive line. Everything was speed, 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 which is a good segue into what type of a defense, or, or basically I should just phrase this question simply. How do you stop Tom Brady in the Super Bowl? I mean, everybody's talking about, uh, what do you, go ahead. You wanna Pressure up the middle. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Pressure up the middle, get Brady uncomfortable. He can't step up. You know he's not moving out the pocket. So pressure up the middle, hit him, hit him, hit him. I, I, I agree with that. If, if you want to beat Tom Brady and the Giants set the blueprint for it, yes, sir. I think it was on accident because they had to rush him every time. Every not yeah. off the ends, by the way. Right. Come up the middle. No, that, that's, the, that's the thing that they did. And in that Super Bowl, uh, when the Giants uh, beat him, I said to my buddy, when is the last time you saw Brady get sacked twice in a row? They sacked him twice in a row because what they did was they gambled on a blitz. Justin Tuck came up the middle, and they just made him uncomfortable from the start because if you, two seconds, three seconds, Brady's going to dump it. So you just got to – the play needs to just be disrupted. You're going to have to gamble, and you're going to have to get to him, make him uncomfortable, knock him down all day. That's it. And the other thing you need to do, McVay, do not play zone. He'll, he'll will demolish you if you play zone defense against him. Uh, again, the offense is designed – yeah. For those quick, those quick hits, they do a lot of pick patterns that are like borderline illegal, where they shadow another guy underneath, open. Underneath, Edelman, those quick little, like it's like almost like a version of the West Coast offense, I would say, or no? Would you agree with that? It looks, it reminds me a little bit of it, with with you know, like the quick, the quick outs like sim and, yeah, and underneath. Um, the drags underneath, yeah. But that's why I feel everybody's talking Brady, everybody's talking Goff, Gurley. To me, the key to this game is going to be Aaron Donald and Sue. <laughs> <laughs>
and, 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 and I think that's going to be the key. If those two guys can get, get up the middle pressure, getting Brady out of the pocket, flustering him, let's be honest, the guy is not, he's not that great out of the pocket. You, know I mean? you also have to you get him that. if you get him on the run. I don't really see him. Yeah, you have to also remember that the Rams were horrible against the run during the regular season, but in the playoffs they've just been killing it. So if the pa Patriots cannot run the ball, and you fluster Brady up the middle, it could be a long day for Mr. TB12. Well, see, I think both teams are doing that though. I think while the Rams are starting to click on offense and Goff started getting going, I think right now the Patriots defense is starting to, you know, it went from bend, not break, to really doing well, uh, I think, especially against a team like the, you know, everybody they've been playing, the Chargers, the Chiefs. So I think they're both coming into it at the best of the, the height of both. But you know Belichick is going to say, listen, Aaron Donald's not going to beat us. Belichick is going to take him out of the game and say, listen, one of them is going to beat us. If, if one of them, Dominic can sue. But you know what? Aaron Donald is going to have the hardest day of his life against you know, us. You know who I think we're going to hear a lot of on Sunday is, Aaron, is uh, Dante Fowler, excuse me, former Jag. Actually, all, missed Brady on two sacks in the NFC Championship last year. Very uh -huh. salty about it. Had one and a half sacks in the NFC Championship game. They're going to double. You know they're going to double Donald. Probably going to have to double Sue. I'm assuming they'll move him around. They're, you got the I, outside back. I'm Belichick gonna is a master of taking that guy out. You know what he said? Anybody, if, the, if the Kansas City Chiefs beat us, it's not going to be Tyreek Hill. By the way, I just, I just felt John get a little disgruntled when you said he's a genius. And I, and I want to <laughs> let you jump in on Belichick. We're on the same page with that. He's not. But, but I also think Brady is part of it, too. Okay. Different. I, I want to get back to the point of uh, I think Sue, you're going to see why they paid him that money this game. All right, he has been. I think uh, he has like, I think he has less knockdowns than than Donald has sacks. Donald okay. had 20 and a half sacks. This I know. I think uh, Sue's only 25 got like tackles 19 for loss. knockdowns. But he draws even... the double team, so that's right. So Absolutely, that, right. that leaves Donald Sue free. free. But what I'm what I'm telling you is that Sue, I think, is really going to step it up. It's Mark a money game words, for him. And it's... and that interior, those interior defensive tackles are going to wreak havoc on Brady. I think it's going to, and I and I think McVeigh has got something up his sleeve. Well, the one thing I can say about New England is uh, Alex and I were talking about this. Hey, that offensive line for the Patriots, no names as you want to say, but Brady hasn't been sacked in the playoffs hasn't at all. Hasn't been sacked in the playoffs. One hurry in the AFC Championship, two hurries in the Chargers, zero sacks. But look look, look at the defense. I mean, Kansas City's defense is kind of... No, they led, the, yeah, they led the, the league in sacks, my friend. With Chargers the defense. So that, Justin that, Houston yeah. was getting to the quarterback during the time of that playoff game. So, yeah. But I will say, doing my research, Giants had three sacks in 07 and three sacks in 2011 in both both Ws. So they're going to have to get to them. And back to the point that we were saying, remember that first play, the, the, the safety? They just they made Brady uncomfortable from the gate of that game. Let him know, listen, this is the this is the evening that you're about to have, and, and we ended up winning it again. We're past twice. heavy, though. We're past heavy. How do you beat the Rams? Um, you know, I, do you guys? I, I see similarities in McVeigh's offense with uh, with the Patriots as well. You know, uh, even though I think they do go a little uh, a little long ball. I, I'll be honest with you, I've I've only watched maybe five Rams games this season. Well, they're according to Pro Football Reference. That's right. I'm, I'm citing my sources. One third of Goff's throws were play action. So uh -huh. you know they run the pass. Well, of course. Well, they got to play the run. Yeah, of course. I mean, but that's going to freeze up your Goff defense. really is, I think he's most comfortable when he's rolling out right. You got wood. Look, I do this Madden play all the time. It's PA, PA rollout, baby. You send someone deep on a post. You send the tight end or the slot over the middle, and someone's open. You're right. Because you got to respect the well, run. I, I was, Goff, I mean, when he, they're playing zone defense against him, his uh, pass, pass rating is 104. So, so that's why I was going to say I think the passing game is similar. Okay, I see similarities, but what's the matter? You're going to let him get away with making a Madden reference and not jumping all over? Well, I, wa I, I took it make... seriously. Yeah, I but I want to. Well, PA I... rollout, I had the whole thing. <laughs> but I wanted to bring up the running game, which I guess we already covered. I think that's where the Rams obviously are going to excel, although Sony plays. No, but is he? No, but here's the thing. <laughs> which Todd Gurley's showing up? Because Todd Gurley, to me, looked like a mannequin. It looked like a mannequin with his jersey on, sitting there. He wasn't catching balls. He was sitting there. It was, it was a mess. It doesn't matter. So both, is he hurt? Both those running backs sit to the Cowboys. They both had 100 yards. Yeah, Gurley's going to show up. He's not going to be this MIA is it. again. This is it. Yeah, they this got is, one right, game. That's right. it. I mean, the key is with the Patriots, is it going to be Sonny Michel or is it going to be James White? And uh, if the Patriots use James White like Kamara, uh, it could be trouble for the Rams. But... You know, which Patriots running back? It's always somebody 
new for the Patriots. Yeah, it's running so, back by committee, though. I mean, James White had a, a career high in receptions, 87 this year, and Mo Michelle's run for 100 yards in both playoff games. So th they're going to run. They're going to plug Michelle, and I think Burkhead. It's a nice change of pace back, especially in, watch inside out for, the red zone. Watch out for Cordero Patterson. That might be a wrinkle that they could use. You know, the because Patriots yeah, run defense is 30th. I know that's what it's. It's insane how. I mean, I don't want to get on that soapbox again of, of how I, I, I can't remember a Super Bowl favorite with the 30th ranked defense in the end. I mean, think about that. That would have been unheard of 20 years ago. To have the 30th ranked, yeah. well, it's a rush defense. But yeah. when? Right. When yeah, has that ever crazy. happened? That is crazy. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. So then if you're, if you're playing defensive, defensively for the Pats against McVay, are you going predominantly man? You can't. You have to play zone. It's, you, it's I, a lot I of would, cover too. I would say the best way to beat that Ram. I mean, it's it's because of the rushing threat. I, I think. I mean, are we all in agreement that the Rams' rushing game is probably better than the Patriots overall? I agree. If Gurley comes to play, of course. I got to be honest. I, not in the playoffs. No, Sony Michelle has been. Look what Sony Michelle's numbers are. Right now, the better running team is the Patriots. You think so? Look at look at what he did. He had 100 yards rushing at halftime against the Chargers. Do you and they controlled let, the let clock. Let me explain to you. And again, just because I'm a Cowboy, they, they rushed for 100 yards apiece Each. against the arguably number one defense, rush defense in the league. They demolished Dallas. They demolished them. And, I, I and, 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 and again, the Pats haven't really played. I mean, the Chiefs. Let me ask you this question. Go ahead. Which running back Let me right? Ask you a question. Look, I know. I know. I always said we're asking permission to ask a question. Can I ask you some? Go ahead. Right. <laughs> permission which, granted. Paul. Which which running back going into this game is on a bigger high right now? Is playing better and more confident? Is it Todd Gurley or is it Sony Michelle? Oh, I Sony. A, I got a question for you. Oh, oh here we go. Please do. No, which quarterback or which running back? Excuse me. Has a bigger chip on their shoulder to prove that his numbers from this year and the prior year weren't a mirage. Definitely, I would say Gurley, for sure. I, I definitely say that. I just look at momentum and now, and I think what Belichick has done is really stabilize that running game and make them go into this game. They have a blueprint now to win. They have a blueprint to score. Guys. They're going to control the clock and run the ball. I didn't finish my sentence. All right. So I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm totally kidding. Question? <laughs> but as you know. If, if, both, if all those running backs, just say they all play up to their potential, okay? If, if, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I get that. Okay. I agree with that. Do you think so Sony PlayStation over uh, Gurley? Uh, I mean, if they, if they both play to their peak, I think you'd have to say Gurley. I'm just saying that that's not what's happening right now. That's How all. has nobody mentioned C.J. Anderson? That's, I carried that's, the ball 82 times in the I last know. four games. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, I'll get to the Madden simulation prediction in a second. But when I saw the brief highlight, they had C.J. Anderson with a stat line in the one-minute highlight. A stat line. See, I look it at C.J. Anderson doing that as a red flag for the Rams because the fact that their star, Gurley, is not the main carrying the main load and they need this guy. You know what, you, well, you I, know, you know what we're forgetting hurt. here, guys? Oh, go ahead. Girl, I, make I love Gurley. how I'm judging Todd Gurley. Gurley was hurt at the end of the year, so if you look at the last two games of the regular season in the playoffs, the Rams with C.J. Anderson led the league in rushing those last couple of weeks of the regular season and the playoffs. So just, just – yeah. Don't, you know, so sleep this, on CJ. If, if this game becomes a shootout, it's going to come down to one stop, right? I, I should really see this becoming I a shootout. Don't, I, I don't want to get a, into the picks yet. I'm a five-foot-eight Italian. <laughs> judging who, who, and I'm judging Todd Cobb sitting here. You're up. almost middle you age. What, You're I, almost I, I, middle, I got two kids at home. I couldn't fucking run up a flight of stairs right now. without. And I'm like, you know what? This Todd Gurley guy doesn't have it. Like, you don't have it anymore. <laughs> Todd Gurley don't have it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, can I ask you a question, Gurley? All right, so keys. Wait, keys I got a game. question. I've, I've been holding off because I've been okay. wanting, wanting him to go. Sure. Who, and honestly, because we keep forgetting how good the Rams are, and you can vouch for this. They, they were the odds they were even going to go undefeated this right, year. Right, right. They were 8 0, and we have. So are we off. falling into this whole Patriots mystique, or are we forgetting? Right? Or do or, or I should rephrase that. Or do you think the Patriots are really that much of a better team than the Rams? Here's what I'll say. I don't think that this is Patriots mystique. Okay? They've been to eight Super Bowls. Okay, we're not we're also hold on a second though. Let me just let me just say. The only game that they were ever losing by a lot and getting blown out, they came back and won. So there's no mystique here. They're not gonna get blown out. They're just not. They're just too good of a team. They have too good of leaders. So 
in order for, I think the Rams have to be perfect. I don't think there's a mystique here. They're just a, they're just a buttoned up. You know, so you think the, the Patriots team is a better team than the Rams? Overall, on paper, record-wise, competition-wise, no, no. who they beat? No, like not on paper because I think Kansas City was better on paper, and you could actually look at the San Diego Chargers and say they're better on San paper. San Diego brought that hit. But here's the thing. <laughs> Those teams on paper may be better. We're talking about a team that this is like a regular season game for No, no, this, it's, this, it's reset. This, 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 is, this is a reset. It's 0-0, right. zero, zero, nothing, nothing. Who cares about nine, eight Super Bowls, whatever. You're telling me right now that – the weapons that the, the, the Patriots have, the defensive weapons that they have, and what the Rams have. You're telling me you think the Patriots are a better team than the Rams? If I look at it on paper, no. But gun, let me ask you a question, then. All three of you. Gun to your head. Gun to your head. Why, why we got guns involved? <laughs> <laughs> gun to your head. Who's winning this game? Gun to your head. We can't do that yet. Uh, yeah. What a segue. Yeah, yeah. Picks. Those are our picks. Those are our picks. Those are our picks. So hold that thought. Okay, let's get into the gambling aspect of the game. Um, I don't want to get your picks yet or any of that stuff. Okay, I want to ask you, Lamar, about the prop bets. Uh, those are always my favorite part of the Super Bowl is, are the prop bets. I, I don't know if we're all in agreement in that. I just do know when, when the Pats played the Falcons, I was already down a buck fifty at the coin toss. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> It I've was... taken tails seven years in a row. <laughs> and I'm a degenerate. <laughs> so uh, what are some of the prop bets this week there, buddy boy? Uh, some of the big prop bets that everyone likes to bet, quarterback props, head-to-head. Uh, -head. So basically, how many yards is Brady going to throw for? How many yards is Goff going to throw for? Running back props, same thing. How many yards is uh, Gurley going to run for? Sony Michelle. And you, of course, have the receiver props. What's lacking, though, a lot of times is defensive props, but we do have – some of those up there too as well. Uh, one of our one of our return guests would always come in and bet the point spread prop. This gentleman is notorious for laying the big chalk. So bet nine. Could you explain to people yeah, absolutely. and me and big... Paul and everybody else what the point spread prop is? Yeah, the point spread prop. So normally you have your regular game prop or you, you have your number of game point spread. So right now Patriots, two and a half, 56 and a half on the total. So what we'll do is we'll change it up. So we'll give a prop, a point spread prop where the Rams are the favorite, two and a half, seven and a half, ten and a half, fourteen and a half, and we'll do it the other way as well too for the uh, favorite. So, but the difference here is if you look at the Rams where they're minus fourteen and a half, this is a point spread prop. Rams have to win by fifteen points, but you have to lay nine dollars on the Patriots if you take the plus fourteen and a half. So this gentleman typically would come in and bet, let's say. 900,000 to win 100,000 because he'd be taking the Patriots plus 14 and a half, but he's got to lay nine to one. Wow. That's a perfect point spread prop for him. And I'm sure I'm going to see him this weekend. 900,000? Yes. To win 100 grand? Yes. Now, because you, you, you're betting that's going to be within because a he's just going, they're going to blow him right. out. He's believing right. they're going to blow him out. Right. No, what he's no. believing, what he's believing, he's taking the Patriots plus 14 and a half. He's saying that the Rams, and I, I've already Oh, I got it. This. I got it. I've already circled The other way. This. Got it. Yeah, I've already circled this because I know when he, when he comes in this weekend, that's the point spread prop he's going to take. He's going to take, and he had a couple years ago with the. Um, Are you friends with this guy? <laughs> no, not friends like that. I was going to say, me, me, me and Paul were looking to open up a pizzeria. <laughs> We only need 50 grand. That's, that's a sure bet right there. That's, well, awesome. that's, that's what he's going to do. He's going to come in and lay the 9 to 1, take the Patriots plus 14 and a half. That's his MO. Wow. What other props are there? Um, you name it. First quarter, first team to score eight points. First uh, total point scored by the Patriots. Will a team score three times in a row? We have indi individual props. Who's going to win the MVP? We got okay. them all. So people go hard, though. You know, those guys oh, like, yeah. I got a hunch. They're coming out. Here's yeah. my hunch. They're coming out in the throwbacks. I put 1,500 on it. I got a hunch. Do they have an over and under on the national anthem? We, yeah, we don't offer that, but uh, that is offered, yes. If you guys were making prop bets and you were on the committee, what fun one would you guys make? Um, you know, it's a good one that there'll be a blocked punt or field goal in the game. I like is that, that on there? No, that, but that is a good one. That's a good that's one, a good like one. a because like that, that's got to be money. Like, I bet there's going to be a block kick in a game. I, I, you, I would, you, this go, is the thing with prop bets. All, Joe Public likes to bet the yes on all those props, whereas the sharp guys, they're typically going to bet the no. If they see some low-hanging fruit, 
They'll yeah. lay it right in the beginning of the week. So, but Joe Public usually gets this number. Me and that. Brett will be up there going, no, Alex will be jumping oh, no. in the back going, yes. Is there, will there be a fake punt or fake field goal? No, a, no. I got one. Yeah, that's I got a good one. one. That's a real what, good one. Let's lay odds. What player gets arrested first after the Super Bowl? <laughs> Be great if it's Brady. Is Adam Adam Jones playing in this game? <laughs> hey, he cleaned his act up. Adam Jones now. Um, all right. Uh, oh, any, anybody else? You want to throw anything else out? I would have made first one, uh, first one to celebrate a sack dance. I think that would have been fun. I, I, I think it's going to be. I think Sue is, is, is. Who's doing that best thing about a fat boy touchdown is a fat boy dance? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you said that very. To good. hit your 35 to yeah. one. <laughs> MVP. Aaron it up. Donald. Aaron Donald. MVP. 70 to 1. That's the good one. That's who, a good one. Who, who, who's who's going to be the uh, the MVP? Aaron Donald. He's going Donald. You really, say, you really think so? I really think so. One. There's no way. Not, yeah. Yeah, but here's, exactly. the, here's the problem with that thing. Defense obviously never gets the love. I think Ray Lewis was the, the last one to get it, right? Wasn't it? The last defensive MVP? It's been like what about Randy White, Harvey Martin. Um, they code. Right. Bob Lilly, I think, got it. Um, Jake Scott for the Dolphins was one. What about the year the Broncos got blown out? Who was it that year when they played Seattle? Larry uh, Brown Seattle, got it. When, they got, when the Seattle blew them out. Mm. You know, it, Dallas is the, I think Dallas is the only team with a Super Bowl MVP with a, with a, on the losing side. Right, yeah, that's true. Wow, Holly. yeah. Howley. Wild. Yeah. Ray Lewis and Dexter Jackson for Tampa Bay. Right. The last two. Wow. Defense that's a great MVP. call, Lamar. Right. That might be a great call. You got to take a shot with that. Well, that's why it's 70 to 1. Exactly. How could, a, how could the most valuable player lose, though? Huh? Well, it's the, be, the guy that had the best performance. Yeah, but yeah. that's what's the Which value? Which would have been a great segue into you. Super Bowl performances. Oh. We'll save that the next week yeah. after All the right. game. Yeah, we'll that's see. like a trophy for everybody move. Both, both those guys won, though. Both, no, Lewis no, we, I was, he was just with his Dallas thing. I was yeah, just wondering was, how you could give the MVP I think to a player was, in the Super Bowl that lost because I, it's supposed to be the most valuable player of the outcome, right? That was well, that the game, goal. but it was it was the 16-13, right? Yeah, 16-13 game. It was. Jacob DeGrom won the uh, Cy Young this year. Yeah, it's true. But but but, but he said, but that's that's a that's a that's a season. That's an individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. This I was know. a game. All right. So who's your MVP? You get, he's, yeah, he's got Donald. MVP. You got, you got, uh, got Let's go MVP and then the keys to the game. I, I'm, I'm torn between Sony Michelle or Tom Brady, but I'm going to take Tom Terrific at 41 years old. TB12? I'm doubling down with Paul. Full circle. Two Bradys. Won the Super Bowl Lamar, MVP. Who's your, who's your Super Aaron, Bowl? You got Aaron MVP. Donald. Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. Wow. Tells you where Donald. I'm going. 70 to 1. You know who's also 71? James Devlin, the fullback. Yeah. Just giving you a little run. Yeah. <laughs> the same. What the, that's almost disrespectful Aaron Donald, quite frankly. Absolutely. 70. Brad, who do you like? A Dominic Consume? No, I, I, I honestly think it's going to be a running back, and I, and I think it's going to be a Rams running back, and I think. CJ Anderson? Wow. Todd Gurley? I, I, you know oh, what? he's taking Gurley. I, I think I'm feel taking Gurley. I'm going to take Gurley. And, and, I'll and, I, and I'll be the first. And I'll be the first to go into my pick. And I'm telling you right now, I thought about this a lot last night. Yesterday, I almost put money on the Pats. I'm glad I didn't. I, I think the Rams are gonna. I think the Rams are gonna win, and, and um, I think they're the better oh. team. Oh. Um, oh. So you just jumped in the picks there. Okay. That's what I was yeah, saying. Sure. That's, that was my segue. Sure. Why not? Okay. Yeah. This is sure. So, uh, this is yeah. Why not? Keys. These Brett's, are your keys. Brett's pick. Hey, hey, you know what Brett's nickname is? Tony. You know what Tony spelled backwards is? Why not? That's what he went into. Is that what you call gamblers like me, or why not? Is that, is that what you call guys that are 79% and, and beat up this casino? Hey, at least you're not mush like not me. Not no. Okay, so let's, let's start. Let's, let's Anybody start else out. take Clemson in the money line? Brent, <laughs> why not? Brett kicked us off. Brett's pick for the Super Bowl, Los Angeles Rams. And I'm going to tell you why. And here's the keys to beating the Patriots. I'll give you my pick, and I'm going to tell you the keys to beating the Patriots, okay? We talked about it. It's going to be offense, uh, stopping uh, uh, the Patriots offense. Don't play zone and put pressure on Brady. Up the middle, I don't think it's going to be as close as everybody thinks it is. I think the Rams are going to win by nine points, okay? Oh, flipped it, yeah. And, and um, I think the Rams defense is going, to, is, going to, is going to come on strong. The Rams are the better team. So the key to beating the Patriots is just put pressure on Brady, force the run game. 
and uh, I, I think that defensive line is going to come to play for the Rams. You, my friend, should bet the prop. Rams minus 10 and a half. You get 450 for every dollar you bet back. So that's the one. That's the one I'm. Yeah. All right, Lamar, that'll bring us to you. What's your key to the Trump. game and who's going to win? Key to the game, Aaron Donald and, and Dominican Sue getting pressure up the middle, allowing Fowler and Brockers to harass Brady, hit Brady, hit Brady, hit Brady. As long as they can do that, I think they'll win the game, and I think they'll win it convincingly. My buddy back in uh, Boston, he's already told me he's all over, all over the uh, Rams in a blowout. I'm following his lead. So two for the Rams right now. All right, let's, uh, let, well, well, we'll save Alex because we know what Paul's pick is from last week. Go we'll we'll ahead. again. What's your key to the game? Well, who's win? the key to the game, the only way the Rams win this game is if they play perfect. Uh, less penalties. You know that you know that the Patriots are going to have less penalties than the Rams in the game because that's what they do. They're that good. They're that well coached and disciplined. So the Rams need to play perfect, and that's just not on uh, offense, defense, and special teams. That's with penalties. They don't have the experience to do that. Uh, you know, I think that Goff will make a mistake. I think that they'll have more penalties. I think that they'll have more turnovers, and I think Tom Terrific solidifies every doubter. They're going to win the game. I got it, 34-23 Patriots. Uh, I just think they're better coached. I think that uh, Belichick will have an answer for that defensive line, or at least taking one of those guys out, and I think they're going to win the game. Gun to your head. Gun to my head, I take the pats. I got a family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alex, money Monaco. I'm doubling down on Paul. I got TB12. The dynasty goes full circle. Tom wins MVP. The pats win. Keys to the game, very simple. Time of possession. You win that by winning on the ground. Sonny Michelle's going to eat. James White's going to eat reception-wise, and watch Burkhead, who had 12 carries in the AFC Championship, eat as well. I also like Goff to make a mistake. You look at the defensive nucleus. You got Hightower, Trey Flowers, the McCourty twins, and you got Patrick Chung. Those guys have been there outside of the McCourty, Jason, that is. But I got the Patriots with conviction. 34-31. Screw the J-hook. They're covering Pats all day, baby. Okay, so how do you beat the Pats? I mean, how do you beat the Rams? I think you, you don't allow Goff to... Be comfortable outside of the pocket. I think you, you keep Gurley at bay. Look, he's going to, if he had to, if Belichick, we all know he shuts down one guy. I'm assuming Gurley's going to be healthy, so he's going to choose to shut down the run and force Goff to beat him. It's a 24-year-old going against a 66-year-old coach that's now going for his ninth time. I just, I'm taking the veterans. 66 what, and 41. What, wasn't Brady 24 when they beat the greatest show on turf? Sorry. You mean when Adam Vinatieri kicked that field goal? Yeah, it seven, it, 17 years to the day exactly. So let's go reverse. I, but I, I have a question, though. Don't you think that, and, and just saying, Belichick, there's just a, pro, uh, a possibility he might focus on C.J. Anderson to allow Gurley. That's blasphemy. I'm just saying. I mean, no, I just, I just think CJ's caught a nice head of steam. He was, I mean, the guy was eating crackers half the season. Let me ask you a question: Who's the better coach in this game? Uh, well, you got to go Belichick. Okay. okay. Who's okay. the better quarterback in the game? <laughs> Brady. Gotta okay. say Brady. That, so then, gun to my head, I got to take it. <laughs> nobody's telling you. Nobody's gonna. No, but I'm nobody's saying. Putting a gun in your head. <laughs> Has that ever happened, by the way, that you guys were taking action and somebody walked up, putting a gun to somebody's head and going, take. Take him, take him. What are you gonna pick? And the guy's crying. He's saying, hey, "Hand you a note." Like, <laughs> my family's tied up in the trunk. Um, for, I, for clarity, 17 years ago, when the Patriots played the Rams. Yeah. So for clarity. It was uh, McVeigh was in high school. He was 16 years wow. old. Wow. I am. I'm gonna tell you people. Mark my words. When McVeigh was playing Madden back in the day, <laughs> he took that offense. He knows that offense. I think he's copied that offense. And I think he's got a little trick up his sleeve for Belichick. I I'll be honest with you. It's kind of like when Clubber Lang worked out and looked at Rocky. And just, I think McVeigh has been focusing on this prize his whole life. I don't think <laughs> Belichick even knows what's going to hit him. Do you know him. how many little kids play and Madden? I'm going in, and I'm going into my conspiracy pick. And here's another reason why the Rams are going to win. The NFL needs that market. And I guarantee you, it's got to be the other way around. The Pats are not going to get the calls that they're used to getting. I think they want to dethrone them. I think everybody's paying to see Mayweather lose. I think that the Pats have uh, – nobody's I, – I, and, and the book is called? Huh? And the book is called? The fix is it. <laughs> but I'm dead serious. I think the NFL needs the Rams to win. I really do. All right, so we got two Patriots, two Rams. What's the consequence? 
And we, got, Joe, we got some on the panel for Yeah, for and Joe Public's all over the Pats. How about you chug another uh, Long we'll Island iced tea? More Commissario. Speaking of Commissario, right. we want to say Let's a special send this shout in out to Commissario today. Guys, actually, Paul, have you had any of this? Yeah, it's good. It's great. Right? Yeah, it's smooth. Um, yeah. Alex, you ready? Absolutely. You ready? This is all, this is, <laughs> this has become a tradition here. I'm going to let Alex take a shot of Commissario and then take us out, if that's Perfect. okay. And remember, because you're going to forget this. Sure. Make sure you go to the DGShow.com and add yourself to all our social media, uh, YouTube, Twitter. Uh, Paul, also, uh, plug your special again. Yes, check out my special. It's uh, streaming on ComedyCentral.com. It's called uh, Bill Burr Presents Paul Verzi. I'll say this. You could go to my website, PaulVerzi.com, click on the link, and see the whole special there. And, and arguably, I would put you in the top, I would say, 10 comics oh. out right now. Oh, Absolutely. The special's you, phenomenal. Oh, thank you, man. You're hilarious. I laughed. Too. I cried. Take us out, Alex. For Commissario Tequila, I'm the new school millennial going with the old school 66-year-old Bill Belly. Here's to your sixth. Here's to TB12 sixth. And the dynasty coming full circle, baby. You've been tuning in to the D Gentleman Show. Mahalo. And make sure, and don't forget to call your moms. It's very important. Super Bowl Sunday is a holiday. God bless. Check your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> call your mothers. I already said that, you drunk. Sorry. Thank you for saying drunk. That was perfect. There you go. There's, put the cap on. This kid's got problems. <laughs>